you can buy it's almost like a like a chef's grocery store in terms of like dry aged meats and different homemade vinegars it just looks so rad like I, like that that would be to me like where i'd kind of want to check that out okay and the, um, they're making all these in-house creating it on yeah, the yeah. it looks so dope but like in fact i I, 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 it's like it's a very impressive menu of what they're doing and what they're putting together. So that'd be one. Um, I tell you, the other day I was just kind of craving like something comforting, and I was almost said to my wife, "I think we're gonna do it this week. Like, go and get some takeout from Steubens." Okay, go American. Just like I really wanted like a cheesesteak from Steubens and like some gravy fries and be disgusting. Get like a margarita to go or something. And I, you know, I swear to God, I haven't put on. I can't remember who I was telling this. I haven't put on a pant where you had to like actually put like a notch inside of them, yeah, or, like, yeah. a button fashion. Oh, I'm wor- I, I'm go- there's my bread. Be right okay. back. All right, let's see it. Take your time. Right. I'll bring it out. I'll bring uh, it out. I can't wait. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. So for those that are listening at home, obviously I'm gonna have a couple of videos. I'll post them on the internet. But <laughs> Chef is making some bread at home while we're doing this episode. And so he's bringing the sourdough to the video chat, and you'll see the video on Instagram. All right, All right so let's hold on. Let me get this video going right here. Again, this is this is this is. I am I am not a baker by trade. You're not a baker by trade, but what what are we working with here? This is just like your classic sourdough boule that a starter from my from our our pizzeria chef Kenny that he that he gave me, and I've just been messing around with it and having some fun. So. Be right back. Yeah, I like it. It looks nice. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking funny. Uh, that was great. <laughs> so I may cut a couple of seconds out of this, but if you want to fast forward at 30 seconds, my chef lets that be. All right, I'm back. Uh, and he's back already. Look at that. You don't have to fast forward at all. I was going to tell people if they wanted to fast forward 10, 15 seconds, I think they do jumps while you were letting the bread sit. Now, Sorry about that brief interaction in our uh... – I videoed it. I videoed it. So I'm about to post that shit on uh, Instagram (laughs) afterwards. I try to avoid the phone dirt, but that's just too good. I had to whip it out to video that. (laughs) So are you going to start trying some new, like, are you going to use this time to maybe, I mean, y'all use specific, almost regional recipes from parts of Southern Italy or whatever it may be. Is that correct? Southern? Correct, correct. So basically, Prepared to really focuses on um, the food of Rome and South. So it's almost like if you divide uh, Italy, you can almost think of it as like Rome would be like the Washington, D.C., where like the North is very distinct and the South is very distinct in their food and their traditions. But it's just funny, with, you know, as I've really been a scholar of Italian food over the last you know, like decade or so, How'd you become a scholar? Did of Italian like, food? Yeah. Did you just go fuck no, it? Dude, I don't have a drop of Italian blood in me. Did you just go over there and kill it? Like, go over there and just, like, eat and drink and make your way through the country? I mean, yeah. I mean, basically, that's how I got – I mean, I – you know, I grew up right outside New York City, and it was a very uh, Italian-American town where I grew up. So there was a lot of those traditions, like my friends – you know, it, it was like, it would all be like red sauce food would be like celebration mm-hmm. food at friends' houses and neighbors' houses. Um, but I, um, I, this is going to sound like super, you know, hippie here, but like, uh, like, I feel like I really found like my culinary soul in Italian food, if you will. Like I went, I went to a French school. I'm British and Irish by, but you know, it, it, from my heritage, but, um, but I found like I like I really just I was attracted to the food and even more to like the culture of food in Italy. I just fell in love with it. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I was talking with Fritzy the other day, or was that I can't even remember when it was. But we were talking about the Piedmont region, and we just teed off on neviolas, and then we talked about truffles and cheeses and like you know the rich history, and then we dove into the food, and it's like it's yeah. so easy to get just totally immersed in all of that. And when you, you know, when you think of obviously our, you you and I both are very, you know, fair skinned. (laughs) It's probably because of our Scott Irish UK heritage. Just not a great, just never being tan, but just like 
they don't have good food. You know, they're not known for their food there. The Italians, you can get kind of like all caught up in it, similar to how the French are. They're passionate about it, whereas the Scott, Irish, UK, whatever you were, you know, that kind of thing, maybe not so much. So it's easy, like, to, like, it, it's easy to get immersed in. It's, it, the, the UK, like, the northern, uh, especially, like, the British Isles, Ireland, it's, it's, uh, it's eating to live, whereas I think in the Mediterranean, it's living to eat. Yeah, yeah, and it's, you know, it's almost kind of like you mentioned the hippie thing coming out of the, up near New York. Like, New York is one of those cities where, it replaced the word eat with work. Like they live to work up there and up here <laughs> down or out here, we're just working just to get enough to get us to the mountains or to get us, you know, <laughs> or whatever it is, you know, different lifestyles breed different cultures and things of that nature. Totally, man. Totally. Yeah. So, let well, me, yeah, so that's how, that's how we got into it. So are you, are you coming up with anything new? Like, are you, uh, let's start fucking around with new yeah. nudes or is, are you using this time to incubate? Like um, you've, totally you've discovered fucking gravity or some storyline, <laughs> of, of, I believe is the, the reference. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm definitely, I'm definitely trying to stay, um, active in terms of the creative process. And in fact, I'm actually going to mess around with a couple of pasta dough recipes tonight with my Whoa. kid. There you go. What yeah. are you thinking? Um, well, it's, it's, it's spinach season here in that's it, like the one crop coming out of the ground right now here in Colorado is spinach. So we're going to make a spinach dough, but I'm going to do it a little, little differently. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to actually use a couple elements of like, of like ramen noodles in it to see if it might change the texture just because it's, everything's so dry here in Colorado. So like I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little creative and, and trying to just keep on my toes and because otherwise the creative, you know, I feel like the creative process can often be stunted. Yeah. But, and um, I, I mean, speaking of stunted, I may have cut you off earlier. Did you say earlier that you had picked up a new hobby when I, when I had well, made that a was, Well, that, that was, I guess, the bread. Technically, the bread. bread. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, for how long I've been cooking, um, I have like very, very little bread experience. It's just something I like just have not, I think like when I, even when I went to culinary school, I think you could take bread or like charcuterie and I took charcuterie. So. God, um, that sounds like a heaven. Why the fuck did I go to get a bachelor's of science? You're deciding what courses to take and it's between bread and charcuterie. The (laughs) fuck was I thinking? (laughs) Where did you go to culinary school? Uh, it will now it's called, uh, well, when I went, it was called the French Culinary Institute in New York city. Now it's called the international culinary center. Is it CIA? No, CIA is in Hyde park, which is up like by Poughkeepsie. This was like actually downtown New York city, like right next to Chinatown. So I got to like live and work in live, work and go to school in New York city. That sounds pretty fucking legit. I mean, it was awesome. It was yeah. awesome. That's a very Bourdain-ish of a route to take in that game. And now you're a, now you're a pen journalist. You're following <laughs> suit, dude. I mean, we're, I mean, I, I've always had a, I've always had a crush on the man. So I'm like, just following in his footsteps. Ditto. I'm trying to uh, avoid the needle, but everything else will follow. <laughs> <you. laughs> everything except that part. <laughs> yeah, it got a little fickle there, uh, somewhere in the middle. Kitchen Confidential. I was like, nope, not what I spent my paycheck on, but clicks. <laughs> but we're all kind of, you know, on that same path. You know, we all admire him for different but similar traits. You know, he zigged when everyone else zagged, and at the same time, yeah. followed his passion. So it's pretty cool. Um, riddle me this. I think I w- I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. Um, the late night guilty pleasure snack that you're going for after, let's say, a long day of dealing with kids, or if you're the last one up, it's 1030. What are we going for? What am I usually reaching for then? Uh, I feel like a lot of the times it'll be like some kind of leftover meat that I've grilled that's cold. I actually really prefer cold food or room temperature food to hot food. So like there might be like a piece of chicken that was like leftover from grilling from the night before. Like that's what I'll Hanging out in a Ziploc bag just like yeah. on the counter instead of in the fridge? No. Well, no. We'll take it out of the fridge and then eat it. Oh, yeah, just eat it straight, like raw dog it. You don't even throw it in the microwave or anything. <laughs> I mean, you're not – it wouldn't – if you had said that, like, specifically or re- almost about pizza, 
you would find that that's a very highly contentious debate of a lot of people do prefer pizza cold. Like that's, yeah. you know, it kind of like all the things solidify and get to know each other. But when we actually order, like if we'll like order delivery pizza and you know, Don't you get, fucking you get, piss on my parade. Are you about to say you're just going to leave it out and let it chill forever? No, no, but, but when you get it, it's not that hot, right? Like it's like, it's, it's not, it's warm. It's not hot. True. But like, um, my wife and my daughter always want to throw the pizza back in the oven and I'm just like eating it from the box. So it's like completely room temperature. Like that to me is, ugh. okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, you you kind of sold me on it. I, cause I eat it straight from the box as well. I don't yeah. all, I, I'm like, yeah, this is fine enough. You know, like this yeah. is good enough for me. Like I'm not, I'm Popeye's. I eat Popeye's. So another story <laughs> kind of similar to that. A couple of years ago, we did an event in the summertime and I specifically told our team that we were going to cook, serve cold fried chicken. And, uh, and the sous chef from compared to the time looked at me, he was like, chef, are you, you're not, you're, you're serious about this. Like you're going to serve. He's like, people are going to hate this. I'm like, no, dude, I'm telling you cold fried chicken is the way to go. And, um, I, maybe I changed their opinion, like maybe, but I, I definitely tell you that we went to the event, we were serving like a piece of cold fried chicken and like a cold salad. It was like 103 degrees outside and numerous people about half and half came up and said, Oh my God, this is how I used to have fried chicken. And then the other half would come up and be like, so, you know, this is cold, right? <laughs> and like, By the way, it's refreshing, <laughs> a nice change of pace, but you're right. I mean, it's it doesn't it doesn't I don't think you lose anything from cold chicken to hot chicken. I think the only thing that may lose its compromise is if it was fried cold chicken, the skin may not be as popping. But the Fair. chicken itself, Fair. I could fucking eat all day. <laughs> and then, so you're not wrong on that. That's a great concept. I didn't yeah. even think about that. And chili is another one. I feel like if you let chili get cool. Like I can throw it like room temperature, like still has a little viscosity to it. Okay. Not like congealed and like, in like rock formation, but I don't need it piping hot. I can have it just groovy. I don't know, man. I can't say I have any, I'll have to try that. I, have, I can't say I have any experiences with chili, but I will tell you this too. On, on Mondays at Coperto, we do meatballs, right? It's meatball Monday. The next day, if there's some left over, I will come in and eat them cold. And everybody's like, what are you doing? And basically, dude, to me, it's like having like, like Italian pate. <laughs> so it's like, that's, an, that's not a bad like brown stuffing meat with the egg and there's like seasoning. And like, I'm like, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just pate, Italian pate. Uh, you're not wrong. It's a little, <laughs> it is. I mean, I can eat those things cold. Like if there's some sauce on it too, I'll eat, I'll fuck them up. Yeah. Now, if I'm going to go cold meatball, I would even throw it on a little piece of bread and make like an open face sandwich. You're so bougie. You put it on bread. Give me a break. Dude. I mean, <laughs> that would be the Italian way. It's not bougie. It's just the fucking fresh bread is something the Americans have got to get behind. The French yeah. and the Italians have mastered this concept. I, I will. I'll say this actually. And if Fritzi is going to be on after me, he might, he might kill me. I actually think Italian bread sucks. <laughs> as i traveled through italy i was we had really is it just the bread. french that have good bread no dude the the germans i think have the best bread in all of europe well, elaborate you gotta give me some depth here there's like there's like different like seeded breads and like you know like caraway bread and like really like dark brown breads like i don't know to me i thought the best bread was in germany maybe tied with france but those would be my two favorites okay i you yeah. usually when you think of the germans you don't you wouldn't think of it but i guess that's i mean i'll fuck with it i'll give it a yeah. German bread. oh my god i like i like pretzels and schnitzels and shit like seeded bread that i had in 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 um uh, like dusseldorf cologne germany it, it was oh my god it was like oh wow <laughs> okay so here's the question let's say like one we come out of this other side of this recession if you're just like i want to change the scenery would you think about moving back to a, or move to a country like europe with the family and like go work in a restaurant there would that yeah. be something realistic that an american can do is it oh yeah i definitely think with your be, skill set would you want I, to i my wife and i have certainly talked about like wanting to do something like that i don't know how re you use the word realistic 
don't know how realistic that actually 